Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Planet Lisdom. I am Lisdom, your host for this evening, and I'm an artist, and I'm going through a lot of craziness this week, just like you are with this pandemic. Welcome back. I'm so happy to see all of you guys. I'm happy for you to be here, and I'm so glad that we could just make it in general. This week, I have a really amazing guest for you. She hails out of the States, and I met her about two years ago at Something Strange. She's a very, very wonderful performer, one of my favorites. In fact, I even named one of my plants after her. And today, she's going to be discussing with us what it's like to live as a sideshow performer and entertainer in general during this pandemic, how she's surviving and how she is thriving. I can't even say it. I'm so excited to have her here. Everybody, please give a wonderful and warm welcome to one of my favorite artists, Pipsy Pinwheel. Yay! Hi! Hello! <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. I'm so happy to have you here. You look fantastic. Oh my gosh, here. I think I can see. Yes, I can see you perfectly. How are you doing? I am doing good. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Um, please remind me again where you are situated in the States right now. I am situated in Tampa, Florida at the moment at my family's house, um, but I am staying over in Melbourne, Florida. Okay. The Brevard Renaissance Festival site. Very cool. So um, is this a festival that happens um, every year at this time, or is this something that um, is just started this year? It's, uh, this is its sixth year uh, going on. They like never worried about it not opening but they are going with what the cdc tells them uh the patrons have been wearing their masks we've been wearing our masks i'm i'm only not wearing mine when i'm on stage and as soon as i'm off it goes right back on um i mainly just stay in my camper uh, Oh yeah, I love your camper. Actually, you know what? I have a photo of your camper that I want to show everyone because I think it is absolutely the coolest thing ever. Guys, you should see what Pipsy has done. Here we go. Look at that! <laughs> <laughs> I love that. How comfortable is that to live in? So I'm thinking about getting a slightly bigger camper. <laughs> Um, but it's not bad. It's better than a tent. Um, it's a runaway camper from Runaway Campers down in Ocala, Florida. It's basically an eight by four coffin with an AC unit and electricity. Okay. Um, now, for those of you who don't really who don't know um, who Pipsy Pinwheel is, what exactly do you do as a performer? As a performer. Um, I, uh, sideshow performer, I do sword swallowing, uh, human blockhead, mental floss, um, oh. <laughs> that is Phoenix Fire who was on last week. Phoenix Fire! But I, we, okay, so, <laughs> I knew that, I just didn't want to butcher saying things, because I kept saying Phoenix Fox and I knew it was Phoenix Fire. <laughs> you know what? I get everything wrong all the time, so don't worry. If anyone's going to make a mistake, it's going to be this girl. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Phoenix Fire, I know. I know. And I miss you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, please remind me, because I, again, I always get this mixed up. What is mental floss exactly? Oh, uh, you take a balloon and you put it through your nose, or a condom, or a spaghetti, and then you suck it in, and you pull it out your mouth. That's right. Oh, man. I wish I could do that. I can't do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, <laughs> it's an interesting feeling. Um, I do uh, put a mouse trap on my tongue. Okay. I can squirt water out of my eye. Um, I call this hand torsion where I it, it's like a mirror I'm trying to get it right there we go take my finger and just bend it all the way to the back oh my god here I'm gonna give you this oh, oh okay um my, my little hand torsion I need to get my hand a sexy little um aerialist uniform or contortion uniform Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. 
<laughs> and that's hand torsion. Um, also, I do acting. Um, I'm a mermaid occasionally, and I'm a clown. Um, You're a mermaid sometimes. I'm a mermaid that. sometimes. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Oh my gosh. Okay, so what would you say is your favorite? Um, your favorite stunt to perform. Oh, uh, oh, and stapling. Um, I really enjoy stapling things to myself and sword swallowing. Um, the, the I like the um, acts that get the reactions from the audience, but if I were to side by side that with something, it would have to be bad jokes. Oh, yes, I love a good bad joke. <laughs> All of the puns. Oh, I am all about the puns. I am a dad joke fanatic. If I can make them, I absolutely will. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, you know, obviously we're all we're all in you know this pandemic together, and we're going through different things, and different parts of the world are experiencing different levels of lockdown and procedures and that sort of thing. Um, when when did your first lockdown happen for you? Like, when was your first experience with quarantine? Uh, my first experience with uh, quarantine would be when the coronavirus first started. I was working the um, Bay Area Renaissance Festival, and it was such a, it was in March, um, and it was such a surreal feeling, like, getting shut down, and I'm like, uh okay, I guess I need to go back to Michigan. So I go back to Michigan and I'm hearing things on the radio and I'm like, am I in a zombie apocalypse movie? I'm hearing on the radio things that are recorded from somewhere else that they're like playing like drink hot uh, tea and anything that is hot and stay inside. And I'm driving, I'm trying to drive and I'm like, uh, like, do my best to not touch the gas pump and everything. And I finally make it up to Michigan and I just stayed inside. Of course, you know, I was wondering that because, you know, you, you're in your, your Pipsy pinwheel trailer and you are traveling around. Um, my partner and I live up in uh, Michigan. So I'm, I'm like, I'm based out of there when I'm not on lockdown. <laughs> now during lockdown, um, you're a performer and an entertainer. Did you do any performing online or anything like that? So when it all first started happening um, and just hearing things getting canceled and not knowing when anything would start back up uh, got real sad. Yeah. Um, and just like, um, how am I going to live? <laughs> and uh it, it took me a bit but i saw that like people were doing live shows and stuff and i'm like i i put together a couple of my own like little solo live shows and uh some friends have in, huh well, i'm like that's awesome like i'm glad i'm glad to hear you did that <laughs> um so like it, it gave me time to like take more saucy photos for my Instagram and uh, just like sometimes it takes a lot to motivate yourself to put on a costume and put on the makeup um, but that's basically like where I went with it I'm like okay I want to focus my energy as much as I can to try and create which is really hard sometimes when your motivation is like lost <laughs> yeah well i have to say you know my hat's off to you well not this one because i like it i don't want to tear it off but i i did enjoy watching you uh you know continue to perform and you know uh be pipsy pinwheel during those times because it was very surreal and very dark and it was very motivating to see you know um fellow artists find a bit of energy to do it because it is exhausting you know and it, it is it, it does take a lot of energy to focus even for 20 minutes to do that. So, I mean, I'm so proud of you for being able to wade through that and do a little something for yourself. Thank you. Like, really, that, that really like, means a lot to me. And I'm sometimes not like, I, I appreciate compliments, but like my reactions to be like, 
but no truly i mean it, it, it really kind of um and i know it's going to sound weird but it gave me hope that you know it, if someone that i look up to and admire can you know find the the wherewithal to even for five minutes be their their persona and be their performer then so can i you know and it, it the process happens at different times it's never consistent you know, um, even just getting dressed today took a lot of um, focus and determination. You know, uh, it's it's weird times for sure. Mm -hmm. um, now I know that you're you're said you're working the uh, the Noborn Ren Fest. Is that what it's called? The Brevard Renaissance oh. Festival in Melbourne, Florida. Oh, that's it. I I completely heard it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You, you, uh, your your thoughts were in the right place. Yeah, I'm a little bit dyslexic too, so I, I come to the table honestly about it. Um, <laughs> when you were, you know, doing the, the 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 creative work for yourself during lockdown, did any did any new things come out of that process for you? Um, new things like maybe a, a, a new angle to your act, or you know, a new I don't know, like it's a new thing. Well, um. Like aesthetically, I I really like um, the things in my show, but I'm trying to spruce them up more, um, like uh, new banners, uh, repainting my props, um, commissioning a new bodice, and for that's for Ren Fair, but for like Tipsy myself um, outside of Ren Fair, I'm I'm just like you know trying to work on costuming and uh, just visual, but also besides the costuming and the visual, um, I, I'm always working on my show and uh, there's always room to improve and to get better and I, I just want to keep getting better and doing good. Uh, I use words well. Um, <laughs> well I get it. It's about committing to your craft. You know, it, like I want to also add to the things I know um, with things that I don't already do because I I love sideshow and anything I can do to be a closer part of it. I want to. That's really really exciting, actually. You know, because it's. It's the sort of thing where, I don't know if you've noticed this, but be, because of the pandemic, I feel like I want to physically distance from everybody for safety. Mm -hmm. But creatively and emotionally, I want to be closer to people. You know, and it's it's this weird, um, I guess, dichotomy of, you know, I want to be close to you. Don't come near me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I want to be close to you, but like from six feet away. Like, I feel like a cat, you know, pet me. I hate you. <laughs> you know? I love, you know what, you know, it's so funny, Pipsy. I love that you did that because I actually found this photo of you for your awesome mask. I think that's so cool. I love that. I got this at Petco. No way. <laughs> it's so cute. I love it. Thank you. I, I do love that masks have kind of become the new fashion accessory or fashion statement. Um, oh, and you know what? Here's a, here's a wonderful comment that I think you should read. Um, from Phoenix Fire, Christopher Campbell. He says, you've improved so much over the years. Cannot wait to see you get more gooder. Oh, <laughs> That's very sweet. Hey, guys, if you have any questions for Pipsy, please reach out. I'm obviously paying attention to the comments. I will bring, you, you know, bring your question to her. You know, hit us. I I, uh, I tried to touch chat and then it did something weird. So uh -oh. I can't see any comments. I don't know what to do to... Well, what I'll do is if anybody brings in a comment, I'll bring it up on our screen. Um, let's see if I can find anything so far. Uh, well, the hand thing. Oh, you know what? Junction Crossroads. Love your horns. Thank you. My partner made this hat and then I stole it and claimed it for myself. I love it. You know what? And a shout out to Junction, Junction Crossroads. Um, they have been supporters and followers of this show since we started thank you guys your support is so so um appreciated and i love that you love the horns because i love the horns too 
you too can have a silly horned hat for the price of Halloween special effects horns and sew them in <laughs> to a I niche cap. I absolutely love it. Oh my gosh. Now, um, you know, I think it's really, really awesome that you can still perform and that you're, you're, you know, working within the, the boundaries um, at the Renaissance Fair. How does that work exactly, you know, in terms of distancing and protocol? Mm -hmm. uh, that, that is a great question. Uh, so, me as a performer, I am always wearing this. Sorry, you can't hear me when I do that. I am, <laughs> pretend it's on my face, always wearing this, unless I am on stage and the benches are far enough away from the stage to where I'm not going to spit on you. And that's another thing that really, like, I had to evolve because my show was very volunteer heavy. Ah. Before times, I wasn't as much of a biohazard, <laughs> but now I am. Uh-huh. 100% a biohazard. Don't touch me. Like, I would cry into people's mouths. Or how I would put it, I would squirt into their mouth. Oh my gosh, I forgot that you do that. <laughs> That's right. I did see you do that. Um, Actually, my favorite, and um, my favorite uh, performance of yours is when you swallow your sword and then you bow. That gets me every time I've seen it. Um, I think I believe you had done a video for us back in April when we were doing uh, Dr. M's Mad Mausoleum, and you had given us a little a little clip. And I think you had done that as well then. And I've, I'm just always impressed by that. My friend Tommy does that when I I, I learned it from watching Tommy Green. <laughs> okay, thank you, Tommy. We're gonna give you a show because it's not something that we encourage anyone to try without professional guidance. Do not try any of these stunts at home, people. I'm doing my due diligence. Sideshow is a lifetime pursuit, and it is a practice that you must do very diligently and carefully with someone who knows what they are doing. Do not. Oh, I definitely trained. Oh, wait, you um, have to be trained. I mean, I I. I could not get on stage right now and swallow a sword. I would die because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm sorry, I got sidetracked with the protocols and oh, such. Yeah. So wear a mask. Um, the patrons are to wear masks. The actors are to wear masks. Um, the benches are spread apart uh, for social distance. Um, there's sanitation stations okay. everywhere. Sanitation station um, everywhere. <laughs> I want everyone to think of that whenever they say sanitation station now. Um, but for, for like, there there is still the risk and everything. But the festival is doing its part to go by the CDC guidelines and make everything as safe as possible and this has really saved my butt because I need to pay rent and occasionally eat food yep. so this, this uh, being able to work a festival with CDC and safety guidelines really has helped me not I'm so glad to hear that. And Pipsy, if you ever feel like you are going to, please reach out. I will not let any of my friends go hungry at all. That's just not going to happen in my world. I um, appreciate that. I'm doing I'm doing very well with um like I've also been selling prints from my Instagram and I've been working on merch. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. Oh, that's right. You did you did a didn't you do a collection of dolls? Yes. Amazing. Guys, if you go to if you find Pepsi Pinwheel on Facebook, TikTok, or Instagram, uh, she's absolutely lovely. And I was gonna say, you know, I wanted to talk about your hustle game and how it has, you know, gotten to the next level because of this situation, which is something that I'm very excited about because this time last year, a lot of us weren't doing any of these things to make extra money or thinking about doing these things. Um, you said that you're doing dolls. What else are you doing right now? So I hand make dolls. Um, I have a small waiting list, but I'm trying to make a big bulk of them to then be like, I have dolls. Um, I have buttons. 
Um, I am I when I can and when I do, I uh, have patches that I hand paint. Um, I have. I'm working on t-shirts. Okay. Um. So. That's my merch. That's <laughs> awesome. It take me a long time to hand sew and paint. And... No, I'll bet. Oh my gosh. I mean, you're you're so creative. As an artist, I understand exactly how much work goes into what you're making. But you know, again, I commend you for doing it. You know, for for just you know embracing the hustle, embracing the fact that you got to do it. You got to survive. You know, and it's it's exciting. The most depressing thought was thinking that I, like, what I do for a living was going to go extinct or that, like, all my friends and everyone who performs and is, you know, an entertainer, uh, you, you know, like, with Roger Rabbit, uh, he can't not finish the Shaving a Haircut 2 bit song. I, it feels like that if we're not allowed to perform. <laughs> it does feel a little bit like it, actually. You know, um, every time, you know, things get tighter again, you know, we'll, we'll have something set up and all of a sudden, you know, the new regulations say, oh, no, you can't do that right now. Oh, no, we're going to take that back from you. Um, do you find that it has made you more adaptable? Like, do you, do you find that you um, can roll with the punches a little bit better, or is it still something that's really <laughs> frightening or frustrating? All of that. Um, I find that I am able to roll with the punches. They still hurt and are very much uh, frustrating. Like, it's it's been a big bout of anxiety and depression and I know everybody has been feeling that and it, it's like getting in your head a lot but I am just rolling with the punches and just trying to move forward and continue doing what I'm doing and not stop. That's amazing of you because really you're you're born into it. I, I have always believed that you you don't choose to be a performer. You are compelled to be. You, you're born into it. You it chooses you. You know. Um, <laughs> you chose the performer life, man, or it it chose you. Like there's not much that you can do to be anything other than you are authentically. And um, I I think you know having a sense of community and um, a circle about you of people who are in similar situations like-minded um, performers, people who are, are there to just kind of tell you it's okay to have a crap day, to say, you know what, I totally get it, today sucks, you know, things feel like they're never going to end, it's not forever, it's just for now, you are okay. I think that's so important to have, you know, um, I, I believe that, you know, things will get better, I don't know what the new normal will look like, but I'm very hopeful that, you know, if we can adapt and adjust, things will be, you know, different, but exciting again. You know, I, I think when we can get together again, we'll hit the ground running because we have not stopped being creative. We're being creative while having two 10 pound weights on each foot, you know, or, okay, so we have regulations to work around. Um, and okay, so I have to figure out how I'm going to pay the bills and not starve within these strange boundaries, you know, that are frightening and I'm dealing with anxiety and all this other garbage is coming my way that I didn't ask for. But when all of that dissipates and goes away and all of a sudden, you know, the, the stage kind of comes back to us, I think there's going to be, at least in, in my humble opinion, a very different sense of gratitude and excitement to be there. People are going to show up to perform. People are going to show up to watch. You know, it will be an event again. I feel the the same like when when things go back to a semblance of normal people are going to have a greater appreciation for the arts and performing arts and entertainers and all of that and also now is an important time to support your artist friends uh not just me there's like I'm not saying like go buy my stuff because I don't have it out yet however there's a lot of people out there that have fun things you can buy. Absolutely. Go find them. <laughs> That's great. 
And now here's my favorite sign. Ready? What's next? I knew that myself. <laughs> What's next? Like, what what is on your radar? What what are you dreaming about doing? What are you planning in your head? Moving past this, so what do you want? Like, where do you want to be this time next year? Well, what am I dreaming? Um, I'm hoping to get my acting resume uh, completed and to uh, either audition for things or create my own B-horror movies because that's what makes me happy. They're going to be terrible. Oh, my um, God. And I also... Oh, my God, I'm so excited. I also, um, like, I, I've been saving up for a new To Me car, which... I was just able to uh, get today. Shush, shush, don't tell anyone. Everyone's watching. Um, to uh, be able to pull a slightly bigger camper, and I'm hoping with that that I'll be able to be more mobile and travel more and have accessibility to perform in a variety of different places while also being able to shower and go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> what was that in the background? <laughs> oh, that's my brother. I think my brother's room, guys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you always, you are always welcome in Toronto. You always have a place to stay when you come up here. Guaranteed. Just give me five minutes notice. And we'll make sure that, you know, you have a place to stay. Um, as you. it is, we are so excited to have you as part of something strange this Saturday. I have to talk about it because I'm, so, so, so thrilled to have you aboard. Um, what we've been doing, everybody, is uh, Mysterian and I have been putting together um, a show for Zoom, Something Strange. If you go to Facebook and go to Something, Something Strange Slideshow Fest on Zoom, say that five times fast, get your ticket at Eventbrite. Um, it happens this Saturday. It's only $13. We can bring the world of Sideshow to you in your home. You don't even need to wear pants. That is absolutely optional. And Pipsy is actually going to be part of our show. We're so excited to have her back. She's fantastic. Um, and it's it's going to be a really great event. You know, um, yes, we can't perform in person, but we can perform for you still. And this is a great way to enjoy it from the comfort of your own home instead of coming all the way to Toronto. Although we do hope you do when things go back to normal. I have to say that. But for this year, come on out virtually. We'll, we are so happy to have you. Um, Pipsy. I apologize. I do have, I, I have to let you go tonight just because I have to hop onto a podcast after this, <laughs> which I'm very glad and grateful to be a part of. But um, before we go, is there anything else you want to talk about? Um, I'm waiting for some comments from other people, but I think everybody's a little shy today. Yes. Um, it's, it's not really to talk about more or less to make a statement. Uh, everything's been really hard i know everything's been really hard for everybody and the fact that everyone has all of you guys have hung in and are still here and just sentimental stuff no sentimental but sentimental um i'm proud of all of you and things suck sometimes or a lot of times um sometimes it's hard to pull yourself out of bed but even a little bit of momentum is still some momentum. So keep doing what makes you happy or at least aiming in that direction. Oh, you know what, Pepsi? That's so well said. Thank you for sharing that because you're absolutely right. You know, every little step ahead is still a step ahead. As always, you know, I think you're so lovely and I'm so happy that you could talk with us tonight. I hope we can have you back on again in the future. I look forward to seeing what you're doing. And I'm so excited to have you on the show on Saturday. I'm really excited for Saturday's show. Thank you so much for having me on oh this show. My pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing your insight. And guys, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me at Planet Wisdom or Pipsy Pinwheel on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. I hope you guys are well. Keep well, be well, and I'll see you very soon on Planet Wisdom. Bye, Pipsy. Take care. Bye. I'll see you soon. See you soon. Bye. All right, guys, that was Pipsy Pinwheel. I adore her. I love her. I'm so happy she could talk with us today. I do have to go tonight because I have a podcast after this, but I will see you this time next week, 8 p.m. on Planet Wisdom next Thursday. Be well, everybody. I'll talk to you soon.